guys, and ready, we're moving on to lesson two, okay? And the focus on this lesson is main idea and key details. Another important thing to remember is that we are on RI 3.2, okay? So all the texts that we're going to be focusing on will be informational, okay? They are not going to be stories and make-believe things. They will be things that we could actually learn about. Okay, so we're going to focus on finding the main idea using key details and using those two things, right, to help us understand what we are reading. So we're going to start with the lesson here in ready. So I want everyone to pay, pay attention. Do you ever wonder, what could you do with worm spit? Let's read to find out. Ew, worm spits. Wearing Worm Spit by Helena Nowicki. Before you read, do you know what thread is? If you do, tap the picture that shows thread. If you don't, tap the question mark to learn more. Well, typically in a classroom, we would go through this together. So we're going to not go through it together. I'm going to talk to you about it, about what you should be doing before you read. Obviously, you need to make sure that you're paying attention to the front cover of the book because they're going to give you clues, right? And our question is, do you know what thread is? All right, some of us might not know what thread is. It's not a word that we typically use often, right? But we can use process of elimination. I've talked to you guys about that. Look at all your options and eliminate, that means remove, take away, get rid of, the options that do not make sense. So the first option, I see a rope and I see a knot. So I'm going to eliminate that option because that's not talking about thread. I see a rope and I see a knot. The second option, I see kind of like string and a fabric something, right, yarn maybe. That kind of, remember, like if I know what thread is, so I think it might be this option. You got it! Are you ready to read Wearing Worm Spit? Let's go! Think about the clothing you wear. You wear socks, shirts, pants, and more. Would you wear clothing made from worm spit? Worm spit! Would you? Would anyone? This woman does. So I see this woman and she's wearing a dress. So, and it says, it said she wears worm spit. So maybe, maybe she. Her dress is made out of worm spit? I don't know. Look at the picture. What is the woman wearing that could be made from worm spit? Well, like I said, I, I think it's the dress. I don't think it's the shoes and I don't think it's the jewelry because in the beginning of the front cover of the book, we talked about thread and the correct picture was all the string, right? And the, and the fabric. And I know that jewelry is not, not made out of string or fabric. And I know that shoes most of the time are not made out of string or fabric. So I'm going to go with the dress. Process of elimination. There we go. That's it. Beautiful silk clothing starts with spit from inside a silkworm's mouth. The silkworm spit, or saliva, has special proteins in it. These proteins connect to make one long thread. I'm going to pause right there. Let's see what proteins mean. Proteins are small parts of all living things. Okay, so it's the small parts of all living things that connect to make one long thread. Gotcha. Each thread is about one mile long. That's longer than 100 school buses lined up end to end. Okay, hold on. Think about our parking lot where the buses park after school where I take you guys to bus. We have typically like maybe 10 buses, maybe. Imagine 100 school buses lined up end to end. This gets longer than that. And you could see right here, I kind of see the worm inside. <sighs> it gives me the heebie-jeebies. Silkworms use their saliva to make long threads. They wrap the threads around themselves. So all this is made from their saliva and its thread. Ugh. What is this paragraph mostly about? Well, they talk about proteins, right? And they talk about how 
what thread is and how the thread becomes or how the spit becomes thread right because they said that the spit or the saliva are, have the proteins in it and that the proteins connect to make one long thread so i'm gonna go with wait let's read what silkworm proteins are mm, they did talk about that but is that at all here just focus on that i don't think so where clothing is made definitely not talking about that how spit becomes thread did they talk about the spit and then how it becomes thread they did that's right it takes three days for a silkworm to make this long thread a worm wraps the thread the thread around itself again and again this work creates a white fluffy cocoon. The cocoon thread is called raw silk. Raw silk is delicate. What is delicate? Something that is delicate is easy to break. Ooh, okay. So something delicate, right? I don't want to break anything that's delicate in my house. Many cocoon threads must be used to make raw silk strong enough to make clothing. It takes thousands of cocoons to make enough silk for just one dress. This silk dress is made from thousands of cocoons. Ooh. Oh my god, they look like little white beans, right? These are tiny cocoons made out of thread. So they might be a little bit soft. Right now, touch your shirt. That's probably what it feels like. What does the first paragraph mostly tell about? So we're only focusing here. It says, it takes three days for a silkworm to make this long thread. A worm wraps the thread around itself again and again, and this work creates a white fluffy cocoon. The cocoon thread is called raw silk. So what is this mostly about? How many str how strong many threads are? I don't think they talk about how strong it is. How a silkworm makes raw silk? Mm, that might be right, because it talks about the silkworm and how it's making the raw silk. Let's see, see, or the last option. How a dress is made from cocoons. Mm, no, they don't talk about the dress at all. They do show us a picture and how this silk dress is made from thousands of cocoons, but that's down here and they said only in the first paragraph, so that would be up here. So I'm gonna go with the second option. Nice. Yes, good thinking. Now, before I read, notice how I am pausing and going through every single option. Do not get tricked. You don't, this is not a race, okay? Nobody wins a prize for finishing first or just submitting anything, all right? Take your time. People who make silk cloth need many cocoons. They get the cocoons from silkworm farmers. These farmers raise many silkworms at a time. They start with the eggs of silk moths. The eggs hatch into caterpillars, the caterpillars eat and grow, and then each caterpillar makes a cocoon. The farmer collects silkworm cocoons into a basket. Oh, I could just imagine a giant farm filled with caterpillars and worms, and even silk moths. That makes me want to throw up. But I know we need it. So I guess that's good. I guess it's good that I am not doing that. What does this paragraph tell about? Complete the sentence. This paragraph tells how farmers grow silkworms into... Silkworms grow into... Cocoons, silkworms, go into. Let's see, go back, go back. People make silkworms. Keep cocoons from silkworm farmers. These farmers raise many silkworms at a time. They start with the eggs of silk moth. The eggs hatch into the caterpillars. So the caterpillars eat and grow. Then each caterpillar makes a cocoon. So the silkworms grow into cocoons. Ta da! Yes! You figured it out! Always go back. Make sure you go back. Farmers collect the cocoons. They boil them in huge pots. This loosens the cocoons so that the threads will not break. Silk makers wind the threads of raw silk into spools. They dye the silk threads. Then they use machines to weave the colorful threads into cloths. What is weave? When you weave, you cross threads over and under each other to make cloth. Oh, okay, so kind of like sewing. You're going in and out, in and out, in and out. Oh my god, how cool, look at that. 
So luckily, they take out the little caterpillars or the worms from inside the cocoons before they boil them in these huge pots, right? And they're boiling them so that the silkworm, so that the threads don't break, okay? And then that's when they dye them. And when they say dye, that's not dye like you died and you're going to heaven. No, dye with a Y is when you change the color, okay? When you do tie dye, that's what this dye means. You're putting it into a color. So this is how they're changing all the... Wow, this is how they're changing all the threads to different colors and make it into clothing. Silk makers are busy turning threads of raw silk into cloth. Oh my gosh, that's pretty neat. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty neat. What is this page mostly about? Add the main topic to the chart. Hmm. Okay, so we're gonna put the main topic and it says how to make silk threads loose how to make silk threads colorful, and how to make silk threads into cloth. Well, I'm going to go back real quick because I remember hearing about how to make silk loose, right? Loosens a cocoon so that the threads will not break. So that's there for sure. But that's only in this paragraph, so that cannot be the main idea, right? Because they said the whole page. And then here it talks about them being colorful and dyeing them. So that's in the second paragraph, but that's not the main idea of the whole thing. So... I'm going to go with this one, how to make silk threads into cloth, because making them loose, making them colorful, all go together with making it into cloth, okay? Remember, your main idea has to be what it's all about. And look at my key details at the bottom. Farmers collect and boil the threads, that's true, that's a detail. Silk makers wind and dye the thread, that's also another detail. And silk makers weave the threads into cloth, that's another detail, and all these three details tell us that they are making cloth. Let's see. Yes! Right! Way to work it out! So silk cloth is soft and smooth. It can be dull or shiny. It's used to make dresses, suits, shirts, pants, and ties. Silk is unusual. It can warm you in cold weather. In hot weather, silk feels cool on your skin. The next time you see someone wearing a beautiful dress, you might ask, is it worm spit? If that dress is made of silk, the answer is yes. This man's tie and the woman's dress are made from silk. So I'm pretty sure some of you may have something at home made out of silk. It could be a pillow cover, it could be a dress, it could be a tie, it could be an, a, an, a shirt. I want you guys to look around your house and ask your parents if there's anything made out of silk. What is this whole text mostly about? Complete each sentence. Worm spit can be used to make clothing. Proteins and worm spit connect to make one long thread. I remember that. Right? Remember the proteins make one long thread? And the 100 buses was the example. A silkworm wraps the thread around itself to make a cocoon. Remember the little cocoon? They boil them so that they loosen up. Farmers raise silkworms and collect the cocoons, right? They collect them to be able to make them more clothing. Silk makers use these cocoons to turn thread into cloth. Yes. Yes! You got it! Mm -mm -mm. Nice. Cool! You can make clothes from worm spit. What will you read about next? That's pretty awesome. All right, so again, when you're doing the rest of this book, the rest of these pages that I have assigned, make sure you're reading carefully. One more thing we may have already done, or not we may, some of us already did the beginning parts of this lesson. If you already did the beginning parts of this lesson, go back and check your answers, okay? Make sure they're good, make sure they make sense. And then if you're finished with that, I want you on Imagine Learning. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Bye, love you guys.